All right, I'm going to bring my guest over now. Dave is here. So you guys can say hello. Maybe, do you want to introduce yourself? Hey, it's uh, Dave Rave Ogilvy. Thanks for having me, Evelyn. It's awesome to be here. It's been way too long in coming. Yes. Um, so I have to ask first off, where does the rave come from? Uh, when I first started working in a studio, I was working with a band where there was five Daves. And I had a British producer, the engineer was British, and he just said, listen, whenever I need you, I'm just going to call Rave. Don't answer to Dave. So he started doing that, and then eventually bands actually thought that was my name. So it became Rave. And then I've answered to it to this day. Oh, here we all thought you were a raver. No, I wanted to sue them. <laughs> I wanted, really wanted to sue a lot of those people. Just should have got some cut out of that, I figured. <laughs> cool. And then they had the Rave stores and the malls, and it was just, yeah didn't work out and they carried all gothic attire no i'm just kidding no <laughs> that's hot topic yeah <laughs> totally some trip pants yep okay so we're gonna get started with some of your songs and then we're gonna take a little break and ask some questions um so do you want to talk like introduce the songs or do you just want to play them uh, it was funny because i wasn't sure what how to do this so i've kind of broken it half and half of stuff that's influenced me other half of stuff I've actually worked on. So, and then I've kind of put it in categories and I don't even know where to start, but I figured <laughs> I want to get the pop stuff out of the way. Okay, so let's do it. So these are some great friends of mine from Los Angeles, a band called Nightclub. Wonderful band, I love them dearly. Uh, and this is a song called Miss Negativity. Sweet. So I have a little bit of a funny story about this song because I love this song. Um, many of you know that I dress up like a Ghostbuster. And when I do that with the Ghostbusters of BC, we do that to raise funds for children's charities. Um, people always yell at us, who are you going to call? And I always respond with, call me maybe. Nice. Thank you guys so much for tuning in on this Freaky Friday. I'm your hostess with the Toastest, Evelyn13, and I'm here with Dave Rave Ogilvy. Hey. Are you guys ready to have some questions? Yes. So these are my weirdo questions. A lot of you guys uh -oh. that have joined me on Fridays before will know what I'm going to ask. But yeah, let's do this. Sure. <laughs> Put them on the hot seat. What is your favorite Skinny Puppy and Jackalope song? Uh, favorite Skinny Puppy is tough because there's the, the heavy stuff and there's the prettier stuff, as I call it. But I think Warlock is probably my favorite overall, and it means a lot to me because of how it was, what happened when it went, when it was made, and it's just I think it's a brilliant emotional song. And it was kind of the peak of the band. And when Jackalope, uh, I'm still gonna say probably Pretty Life because it was like the first one that we kind of took off, and uh, and actually feel it as well because they're kind of sister songs. They, we did we filmed the two videos back to back at the same time, so they have a big weak spot and. As well on feel it, Trent worked not with that on me. So that how, that uh, that was one of the first times I actually went to him and said, "Hey, I've got some music. Can you help me?" The so that Trent, was very special. yes, the <laughs> Trent, the father of goth. Yes, and <laughs> an awesome guy, super awesome guy, amazing to work with, so talented, so intelligent, and just yeah, one of the nicest guys I've ever worked with. Cool. Um, so what's the story behind Warlock then? Well, it was a weird time in the band where Al Jorgensen from Ministry came up to work with us, and he was on a, I call it a divide and conquer thing. <laughs> so he had taken Kevin and Ogre and kind of was working with them, and Dwayne and I were working on our own, and he was trying to, as far as I'm concerned, was trying to break up the band at that point. Oh. So Dwayne and I were like, we're going to blow your minds we're going to make the stuff we're doing twice as good as the things they're working on so we got into warlock and we just did everything we could possibly do to make it super super amazing we so have that on vinyl here like yeah the it's, single. it's it's a it's a great song and like i say it was a really kind of dividing point where we got together and you know Dwayne was a very very close special friend of mine so the chance that we were like, we're going to prove we're better than you two. It was kind of fun. <laughs> it was kind of really bad, but it did bring everybody together in the end. It didn't, Al did not break us up, even though as hard as he tried. <laughs> That's cool. Um, do you have any upcoming live shows? Not at this moment. We just did, we just, uh, did a new Jackalope track last month for a thing with Exclaim. Oh. And we kind of made a promise that we're going to try and do a, a new track every three months, if not sooner. 
and Crystal, the singer, would love to do some live shows, but I was like, let's just work on a few new songs first, and then we can <laughs> talk about doing live stuff again. Right. But we love doing it, and I would love to get back on it, so maybe summertime. Cool. A uh, new song every three months, that's kind of a, a lot of pressure, isn't it? Uh, it used to be an album a year, so... Oh, I guess, yeah. yeah. So I think, I think we can pull it off. And we love working together. So it's, it's fun to... She, the problem is she's in Nashville now. Oh. So if we do stuff, it's over, you know... The internet. Over the internet. And unfortunately, I prefer to do stuff in person when, when writing songs or working on our own, my own stuff. Of course. For other people's things, I can come from anywhere. Yeah. But it's nice when you're in the same room working on material. I totally agree. That's why I don't do any Zoom meetings on, on Twitch. Uh, the dreaded Zoom <laughs> You have meetings. to come to my house. It's a great house, <laughs> trust me. You want to be here. Uh, what song is the most challenging for you to play live? Uh, I mean, I know you haven't played live in a while, but... That's a good question. The song Delicious is a little bit tough. Yeah. Because it's very precise and it's very energetic. And I really know when I'm fucking up on it. <laughs> and <laughs> Nobody I, else can probably tell, though. No, and I always had a thing with the band. It was always in your monitors, don't listen to me. Yeah. Because you never know what's going to happen. So that was one where, yeah, definitely do not have me on your monitors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then what are some of your favorite cities to play live in? Uh, some of the classics. I love Chicago. I love Toronto. I love... Uh, Dallas, believe it or not, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Vancouver, unfortunately, <laughs> it's always, it, whether it was with Skinny Puppy, whether it was with Jackalope, there's always the hometown thing where you just don't get the love. It mm. was amazing with Skinny Puppy how we could go play in Berlin, we could play in New York City, and then we come back here and it was just like, entertain us. <laughs> and it's like, come on. We're all bitches in Vancouver. No, it's, I think it's a hometown <laughs> thing, but it was always just really frustrating. But we just, with, with Skinny Puppy, we always worried about the world. We didn't worry about Canada. So the fact, in Toronto, we would play to thousands of people and it would be great. And then we'd come home and nothing. But we just were like, whatever. You just got to deal with it. Yeah. Vancouver's a tough crowd, though. It is. And they don't, I don't think they treat a lot of the hometown stuff really fairly. No, no. I agree. Um, so basically all the big cities in the U.S. and Canada, really. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, because a lot of, you know, it's a lot, a lot of North America. It's always been supportive. And it's in, in Europe, it's great, but it's like the, the bigger shows are, I find, in North America. So kind of like the crowds. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And um, are there any cities that you'd like to play in that you haven't? Uh, I've never played in Rome. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. And I've never played... I've never played i've played in japan but not anywhere else in asia so really? i'd probably like to love to try some of the other places in asia it would be great and, and japan was awesome was that with skinny puppy no that was with jackalope actually oh, nice. with skinny puppy we played hawaii oh we never got to play <laughs> japan believe it or not we did do hawaii but uh japan was yeah they're just uh, really uh, they're appreciative and it's a f you know a fun it's it's well organized yes so it's really not a lot of stress yeah, I've been easy. to Japan. It's it's a trip. Yeah, you finish the show, and by the time you've t finished talking to people, fans, all your stuff's put away, and the stage is clean. And you're like, where did the people <laughs> come from? And your stuff's <laughs> in a truck, ready to go, and it's fantastic. The minions have yes, arrived. and you don't see them. And now it's probably robots. Yeah. Which would be kind of cool. Everything is, like, spotless clean. I would love to have robots taking my gear apart. That'd be so cool. In L.A., they have robots that can deliver food to you now. I'm in. I've seen them on the street. Yeah. I mean, they don't move fast, so yeah. I'm like, your food is probably going to be cold. Yeah. But there's a robot driving down the street with a bag. I so love bizarre. it. So bizarre. Yeah, I have no fear. Bring on the robots. <laughs> uh, can you tell us a little bit about the musical writing process? Does the music come first or the lyrics? For me, it's generally music. It's always it's 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 music, and then it goes to you know, whether it was Ogre or whether it's Crystal or whether it's Katie, uh, it generally was always music first with Skinny Poppy, with Jack Lope, and then give it to the singers and let them put stuff on it. Okay. I don't so you don't really write the lyrics? I am not a good lyricist. <laughs> I'm really, I, I can help with lyrics, but right. yeah, it's a, that's a whole art form. Yeah, and, you know, for sure. Ogre's lyrics are crazy. 
They're yes. fantastic. And I, I just like, sometimes I never even knew what he was saying until I could <laughs> read something. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm not the only one. Yeah, no. And, <laughs> and it was just baffled me. And then I'd look at him and say, where did you come up with this combination of words? Like, I don't, I just don't have that side of the brain. I can't draw and I can't write lyrics. I can barely put together a sentence. So yeah, I, I hear it. I hear <laughs> I'm it. not good yeah. with words, but everybody in the chat knows that already. I pronounce everyone's name wrong. They're like, girl, do you know how to read? Yeah. The only reading I do is the library, honey. Um, of all the people you have worked with, who are some of your favorites and why? Definitely Trent, as I was saying earlier, because uh, I've always had a good time working with him. Working with Motley Crue was a lot of fun, <laughs> even though <laughs> I, I believe that I got to work with them when they were all sober. So it, at, at the at the end of the record, actually, it was very funny where I went to Nikki and I said. After all this hype, all these years, I've heard about you guys. This was one of the most boring records I've ever worked on because <laughs> there was nothing what you expected, but there was a great time making it. But all the Motley hype beyond paparazzi and Tommy breaking their cameras and throwing rocks through their windows, that was kind of the, the, the most exciting things they were doing. <laughs> but that, they, that, that was a, a real you know, fun, different world for me. And that was a funny thing, working with them, trying to explain that, I didn't know any of their material because I, we were doing industrial music. So when I got to work with them, they would re reference some of their songs. I'm like, I don't know it. I'm just being honest. I know the songs that the strippers have danced to, <laughs> but I don't know anything else. So what and, does that say about you? Too much yeah, time at the strip club? Too much, maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> it's okay. That wasn't a real question. Yeah, good. We all know the answer. Um, <laughs> what musical artists inspired you the most when you were growing up? That's funny because I was into a lot of pop stuff, but then when I heard Kraftwerk for the first time, it was actually at my first concert, which was David Bowie. Kraftwerk was supposed to open for him, but their equipment was too much to bring across the ocean. Oh. So they just played the record. And I heard that and I was like, what is this? I just love this. And so like what, they lip synced? No, they just played the record before the show. And he oh. just kind of said, they're not going to be here. And then Oh, so it. they didn't come at all? Nope, didn't come at all. And it was just like, I had never heard that before. And I think that really opened up the door. Like, I think I like, like electronic music, <laughs> you know, beyond David Bowie. And I was like, that combination was great. But that was a weird, I don't know, coming of age, realizing, oh, I guess this is where I'm going. Yeah. And then it was funny because the first band I worked with when I moved out here was Images in Vogue, which was nice. a full electronic band as well. GBS. So, so I was like, GBS. <laughs> so I was very, very, uh, yeah, I think that, that, you know, set me in the good direction. Cool. Yeah. Um, Isaac's actually worked with GBS in film. <laughs> ah, yes. Now he's gone down that path. We know the GBS. He's a big man. Um, if we logged into your Spotify, what would we find in your current playlist? Oh, who knows? It's, <laughs> it's so all over the place. And I have the thing of, you know, I listen to, I'll listen to Cat Stevens because I love, you know, I, I, I learn playing acoustic guitar first. So I've always had this uh, link to songs that I could play. So between Neil Young, Cat Stevens, that type of thing. But then you'll go on the other and I'll be listening to Poppy or I'll be listening to, we were just talking about the Tigra. I'll be listening to Wet Leg. I don't, I'm, it's just anything oh, yeah. that, that, that appeals to me, I'll listen to. And the thing is for work, a lot of times I have to, bands will reference things to me. So I have to kind of be on top of what, of projects I'm working with, what type of stuff they listen to. And that's the fun, one of the best things about my job. I will say right now, I have the best job in the world. Um, that working with different artists, they open up your eyes to so many things you'd never see or hear. So I'm always getting turned on to stuff that I would never find it and just check it out. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, put it in a playlist, make sure I don't forget about it. So yeah, it's it's all over the place. That's awesome. Yeah, that's why I have guests because then I'm like, what are you listening to? Yeah, and I I, I <laughs> love, I'm gonna steal all your songs. No, I love people <laughs> telling me stuff it's what they're listening to. I think it's fantastic. Totes, awesome. Um, we're gonna play some more songs. Sure. Um, oh, by the way, that was a f combination of the first song was something I worked on. Second song wasn't. Third song was, and fourth song was. So we're mixing it up. And I was just saying to Evelyn that Lady Gaga was a funny thing because 
their A and R person gave me a copy of that record. I think two months before it came out because he thought I had worked on it because of the sound of the production. And then I listened to it and I was like, "This is phenomenal. This is going to be a huge record." And then I was like, "I wish I had worked on this." <laughs> so I have a real soft spot for that record. And that, that was and that was the first song I'd ever heard from him. Yeah, when he sent me the playlist today, I was like, "Oh my god, did you work on this?" <laughs> Maybe <laughs> did you one work day, with Lady Gaga. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> Maybe I hope so. Okay, so did you want to introduce this next one or no? Nope, let's okay. just play it. Let's just play it. Yep. Enjoy. <laughs> So, someone has used their channel points, big fat sweaty bum crack, <laughs> has redeemed channel points to ask a question, the craziest skinny puppy tour story of all time. I'm going to say uh, Jeffrey Dahmer was at our show, standing in front of me at the front of house on a night that he picked up one of his victims. It's kind of a, not, it's a dark story. But, uh, what city was that in? In Milwaukee. And it was funny because it was the first show of the tour and we were touring with Babes in Toyland. So I had a picture of the marquee which said Skinny Puppy with Babes. So right away I was like, okay, this is going to be a weird night. And then it was super foggy. And then Dwayne, for some reason, got really drunk and was at the back of the bus after the show puking his guts out, which he never does. So something was off that night and having no idea. And then the next tour we were on, we were in St. Petersburg, Florida. And a, I was going, getting on the bus and a woman came up to me and she had a file folder and she was like, this is for you, this is for you. And I'm like, are you sure it's not for Ogre? Because fans usually give him tons of crazy stuff. So I took it on the bus, started reading it, and then it was the transcripts from the Dahmer trial with just the names redacted. And then she had highlighted the section where it spoke of him going to this show, standing at the soundboard and picking out a victim. So I was kind of like, Wow, he was like three feet away from me, probably for a few few songs at least. So what? Yeah. So that was that's that's a, insane. Yeah, that was pretty creepy. Like, did you know that he was like? Did you see him there, or did you no just know idea. from reading no the idea. just from reading the transcripts? And then I was like, wow, that kind of makes sense because Milwaukee didn't have a lot of stuff going on. But the combination of the billboard, the Dwayne, the fog, and then find out afterwards, I was like, yeah, that was a pretty crazy night. Whoa. <laughs> so there's a, there's one of them. There's one. Yeah. That one is a pretty legendary one, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Something you wouldn't forget. <laughs> Sorry, that's how you know it's live, folks. Um, we're going to want it any other way. <laughs> we're going to play a video. Uh, let's do this. That was the janitor. Oh. That's actually not the one. We're playing this one. <laughs> This is a jackalope video. Enjoy.
Jackalope. <laughs> All right, we're going to do some more questions. Awesome. What is your most accomplished achievement and what are you most proud of? Uh, maybe the Carly Rae Jepsen single because it was a number one worldwide hit. And it's like, I got some crazy diamond record or some like, I don't even know what it is, which I never, you know, from the stuff that I work on, I never thought I would have a, a number one pop hit. So yeah. it's pretty, pretty crazy. And uh, so you have like a fancy plaque on your wall. No, I don't put them up on the wall. <laughs> I, have, I have a lot behind my couch. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I've always so your had couch a, had is a, like had, way far away from the wall? Yeah, it's a good four <laughs> or five feet away between animation cells and records. This is where all the awards go. Yeah, it's just I'm, I'm not an awards person. I've always been an award is when you get a royalty check. That's an award as opposed to here's another one of these things that sometimes are manufactured. But the Carly one was pretty crazy. Yeah. And yeah, I never thought that from what I do that would ever happen so that was pretty pretty crazy yeah that is pretty crazy it's pretty cool yeah it's very interesting <laughs> uh, what was the first concert you ever went to I mentioned it early earlier sorry it was David Bowie right the station to station tour and that I was here in Vancouver no in Montreal I'm originally from Montreal and oh. I was 15 at the time and I loved that record and my parents let me go with a friend to see it and it was pretty amazing going to see the see him in the forum on that tour how old were you 15 so okay. it was pretty 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 special that is pretty rad and then years later comes full circle where i got to work with him and Shut actually up. hang out with him which was like once again how did this happen you know i'm one degree from david bowie <laughs> uh, no it was it was it was pretty pretty amazing and i was very very honored to be able to work with him and actually you know hang out with him in person what did you work on him with uh, the I'm Afraid of Americans. Um, oh, yes. That whole EP. The Earthling. Yeah, from the Earthling, yeah. Yeah. And then we did the tour with the Nine Inch Nails Bowie tour. I was out on that with him as well. Oh, what? So it was kind of hanging out with him and his <laughs> world every night, which was just, yeah, so surreal. This is surreal. the part where I bow down and I'm like, I'm not worthy. No, it's, <laughs> I, 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 it was surreal. And it was just it, the chance to actually get to meet him and know him in person and work on his music is just, yeah, it's a privilege. Yeah, that's so cool. Like, yeah. I've told the people in the chat this a few times, but when I was in London, I took the train all the way to the end of the line so I could get a picture with the David Bowie mural, which is like a block from where he was born and grew up. Because nice. I'm like, I love David Bowie. Oh, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> just amazing the, the, the amount of good material he always did and just such a great artist. So many bangers. Yeah, so <laughs> many and so many genres and just always not afraid to you know push the envelope and and Go. reinvent himself yeah, so yeah. many ways. Yep. No fear of shedding his skin. And I feel like he was so ahead of his time. Uh-oh. What? I don't like that look you just made. <laughs> <laughs> That's just my face. <laughs> oh, okay, good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, name a song everyone hates that you love. Oh, wow. That's tough. I know. Uh, we asked serious questions on this channel. Well, we talked about it before. Maybe uh, uh, Aqua. Aqua. Yeah. <laughs> Which track? Uh, There's so many. Barbie song. Oh, Barbie girl. Barbie girl. Yeah, that's a good one. I have a big, big soft spot for that, and I don't think a lot of people like that. Oh, huh. well, maybe you're hanging out with the wrong people. I am hanging out with a lot of <laughs> wrong people. <laughs> hanging out with the wrong crowd on the wrong side of the tracks. Um, if you could only listen to one band for the rest of your life, what band would it be? It could be David Bowie, just because yeah. of the amount of stuff. That's, uh, there's so much that, mind you, you know, I have a thing with some of the classic songs, as people call them. I can't listen to them anymore. It's like, I've, I, I guess there's a point where in my brain I've heard enough and like I don't need to hear it. So I could take away those songs and he would still have a massive catalog that I could still enjoy. Totally true. Yeah. Um, do you have any other cool projects coming up that we should be on the lookout for? Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm probably not supposed to bring it up, but I am working on a new project with Ogre from Skinny Puppy and Paul Barker from Ministry. Oh, cool. And we are trying our damnedest to between the three of us get our schedules together. And it's coming out so cool so far. We're trying to be really just unique again. 
So that's, yeah, hopefully by summertime we'll have some stuff that people are going to hear. But oh, I'm really shit. excited about it. And you heard too, it here first. Yes, you did. And they might kill me for bringing that up. But <laughs> we'll be like, is the song out yet? Is he still alive? Yeah, it's going to be one <laughs> or the other. If Big Kevin finds out, I might be dead. Okay, don't tell. Don't tell, please. What happens on Twitch stays on Twitch. Absolutely. Uh, who would play you on a TV show? Uh, I... I would hope Johnny Depp. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I would pick for myself yeah. as well. So, yeah, it's, I think it's very obvious. <laughs> Clearly. Someone said to me that I looked like Ed Norton at some point, and I just did not get that one. I was like, okay. so maybe Ed Norton, if he's available. If Johnny's not, I'll go with Ed Norton. Uh, what is a dream project that you have? Uh, a dream project I have... Um, that's another good question. I would love to be able to do something with all my, f well, I kind of tried to do that with Jack Lope, where I tried to work with all my friends on different songs and I was able to get a lot of different artists and I would love to still go down that path and just other people that I, I work with that I haven't written with. I would love to continue doing that. And that's so much fun because it's great because I love pushing people out of their genres where you get someone from say a pop, project or someone for a rock band and then throw them into my world and it's so much fun to when you get the combination and how you tell them just do whatever you want and they're so used to being stuck in the genre that they're in when they get the freedom to be have freedom it's usually you get great results that's when the magic happens that is when the magic happens that's awesome uh what is the theme song to your life the theme song to my life Probably something from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> Maybe Island of Misfit Toys? Yes. That might be it. For sure. I definitely hang out with a lot of Misfit Toys. Right? I, I get that. Yeah. I feel that. And I feel really comfortable with them. Whether it's <laughs> the choo-choo with the square wheels or the... Or the squirt gun that squirts so jelly. jelly. Yeah. But like, why don't you just put water in it if it's, it's not... <laughs> and you get, just get rid of the square wheels and put on the round wheels, but yeah. Such easy things to yeah. fix. Maybe they want to be misfits. Have you seen um, Stranger Things? Yes, I have. All of Stranger Things? All of Stranger Things. Okay. So what song would save you from Vecna? Ooh. That's a tough one, too. I Man, know. You're making me think tonight. <laughs> what would save me from Vecna would be um, uh, Closer, Nine Inch Nails. Oh. Oh, yeah. I think that would work. He would be very confused and uh, probably start dancing. Whoops. Or he'd want to fuck you like an animal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, we're a little bit goth and weird on this channel, sure. but I'm pretty sure you knew that already. What song would be played at your funeral? Uh, something from the Brian Eno Apollo record. I oh. think that's one of the most beautiful, one of the wonderful pieces of work. And if that's what people had to come to my funeral and that was playing, I think they would quite feel happy about it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. They'd have the feels. Uh, what's your go-to dance move? It's definitely not the Trump. What is that? Oh, <laughs> that's probably for it's, the best. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't know. That's a, that's a like when you're on stage and you're performing. I do a lot of really goofy things. I have no idea that people point out to me after, and I said I really don't think about it. Oh. And they're like, "Do you know that you did that?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sorry." <laughs> you know, <I laughs> no apologies. A, no, I don't. I don't have a, a a style. I'm very very quirky, very kind of awkward. Okay, but I just do what it feels like fun to do at the time. Okay. So it's we'll have to keep an eye out yeah. and report back. If you watch some of the live videos, you'll probably get a kick out of it. Like I say, don't listen to me in your monitors and don't watch me. <laughs> Otherwise, you will get distracted. All right. All right, we're going to get back to some songs. Did you want to introduce this uh, one? Back to this is one that I worked on. Um, this was a crazy time in my life when I lived in Chicago working with Al Jorgensen. Um, and this is one of the ones that... Uh, definitely brought back a lot of memories so check it out 
It just turns out that we happen to have a few skinny puppy records, so I'm just going to kindly ask Dave to sign them. I hope that Isaac is in the chat. <laughs> Is this going to be a walk down memory lane? I think so. This is like that time I went to see Front 242 at the rickshaw and I had a stack of records and they were like, Lady, are you reselling these? Why, yes, Dave is taking questions. In fact, he's going to answer some questions from big, big, fat, sweaty bunk crack right now. Absolutely. The craziest story from the Nin Bowie tour. Uh, when we were in Dallas, uh, Trent was good friends with the guys from Pantera. So Vinny and Dimebag came to the show and, you know, had a great time. I got to meet David, was hang hanging out with us. And then they brought a present out for Trent. And it was a pair of white snakeskin boots, cowboy boots. And immediately said, we're going, we're taking you out in the town tonight and you're wearing those boots. <laughs> and I looked over at him and I was, I had never seen so much pain in his face. So he had to wear these boots and they fit really nice and they just looked absolutely ridiculous. And then we went out to some of the nicest restaurants and clubs in Dallas that night and he had to walk around in those boots. And, and they were white. They were white, and <laughs> Bowie laughed at them. I laughed at them. Everybody laughed, and I think the Pantera guys were kind of laughing, but they were really beautiful boots, if you like white snakeskin boots. I'm sure they were beautiful, but I can't imagine them on Trent. No, I don't, think he, I don't think he ever wore them again. And, uh, yeah, he was, he did, was not happy that night. Well, at least they fit. They fit perfectly. I think they, <laughs> they look spectacular, but you won't see me wearing white snakeskin boots either. Right? Yeah. I don't think I would wear that either. No, it's a little bit loud, just a bit. Yeah, for people that wear all black. Yes. <laughs> all right. What skinny puppy band member was the most responsible for finding all the samples they used, or was it really a collaborative thing? Uh, in the early days, it was definitely Seven. He, he That was kind of his forte was finding things and getting them off the VHS and getting it onto cassettes. And he always had a, a like a repertoire of where, of, you know, things to find. Um, and then later Dwayne was contributing more like musical samples, like the song Tim, Tin Omen. Mm -hmm. All the guitars on that are samples that he, he just took a bunch of my metal CDs and cause he had, he, he was a very techno electronic guy and I have a very, very, collections so he just took all my metal cds and he went through and just sampled all those guitar parts um i know i want to go on record saying this that al jorgensen has taken credit for writing those guitar parts and i know that he still talks about it to this day but he played his version on top of all of Dwayne's work but it was 100 percent Dwayne's work <laughs> he came up with all the parts and that was all samples but with all the weird like in the choke the tape voices as we call them tape voices in that that was all seven stuff cool yes uh, did you ever do any work with Rob Zombie or White Zombie? I did not do any work with them, but I went to 
see Nightmare Before Christmas the day after it was released in L.A. at El Capitan with him, which was pretty, because he was a huge, I'm, I, was a, I'm, I am a toy collector, and he was as well, and they had the whole diorama of all the movies set out in the lobby, so oh, what? we went and saw the movie together with a, a, a mutual friend, and then you know, we're able to see all the models and stuff that they use for it. That's so, so that cool. was kind of my Rob Zombie moment, and where we we, very, we bonded very much over that. Nice. Yeah, and to this day, I still have some of those toys. I have my little nightmare toys up on the shelf. They're ah. little like, beanie stuffed animals. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Cute. They are. All right. Uh, the next song. We're going to go into, these are some remixes that I was involved with. Um, this one was with N- NERD in New Orleans with Trent as well. Um, and it was great because Pharrell actually came and hung out with us for the whole time. So I had never, I didn't really know much about, about him at the time, but I, I knew NERD. So getting to meet him, and he was really awesome. I got to say, working with him was really a pleasure as well. He, I didn't expect that, just such. And he had such a cool ear for different genres of music. So we got to do this and it was quite awesome. Right on. So check it out. Here it is. Hey, we're going to play another video for you guys. This is an old live video of a skinny puppy performance. So much so our for that gifts are bomb.
Stone, but was filmed in Toronto. Good call. We're going to ask some more questions. Uh, I'm going to start with this question that was asked by Lockin, 1980. What's Dave's favorite synthesizer? <laughs> synthesizer. Syn- synthesizer? <laughs> or piece of studio gear? Uh, my favorite synthesizer. Um, <laughs> no, uh, synths are weird because there's so many good ones and they all have kind of different things. And I was asked the question once, uh, if you had only one piece of equipment to record a record, what would it be? And it would be an SSL board. The solid state logic board is kind of my bread and butter for an analog desk to either record on or mix. And because everything's built into it, you don't need compressors, you don't need EQs. So you could actually record a full record with just that one board without needing anything else. You wouldn't have any delays or reverbs, but it's like, you know, my, my workhorse. And yeah, that would be definitely my favorite. Cool beans. Uh, what is the best gift someone could give you? The best gift, um, brakes for my car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really. Like, I mean, like some fans probably gift you things when they see yeah. you and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's always interesting. I love getting, um, you know, I like, I love, like, like I say, I collect toys. So when I, anybody brings me some, one of the styles of toys that I like, then that's always a, a definitely a treat. So, so if you have any Nightmare Before Christmas, ba- <laughs> Batman actually is my big thing. So if you have any Batman animated series figurines that you don't want, I will gladly take those. I'm glad you clarified that because toys can be taken many ways on this channel. <laughs> yeah, I won't. Yeah, we can talk about that too if you'd like. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dave's like, why the fuck am I here let's again? Leave, let's leave it at Batman. <laughs> uh, tell us about the best live show you ever went to and then tell us about the worst. Best live show I ever went to. That's that's both of those are tough. What was the best live show you've ever been to? Let me ask oh, you a question. Skinny puppy, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I don't know. I've been to so many. But what was the best? The best. Oh, fuck. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what about the worst? The worst was probably Tiger Army. Oh, wow. They had so many sound problems. Oh, and then IMX at Terminus last year. Anybody okay. who was there will understand why. Um, but yeah, Tiger Army played at the Croatian a while back, like years back. And they just could not get the sound to work. And they kept interrupting the show to be like, yeah. you know, change this, change that. And it was just like, did you do a sound check? Yeah, and you know, like, I didn't want to blame them there. or anything, but like... It was just a whole lot of not playing songs and standing around and trying to fix things. And yeah, it was just a mess. That's terrible. So that would be the worst. Um, what did I go to recently? Oh, I went to see Dua Lipa. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was great. How was that? It was awesome. Yeah. Really good. Um, Isaac and I, we've seen a lot of shows together because we're old. Yeah. <laughs> and we've been together for like 17 years. So uh, we've seen like... Uh, we saw the the Doors when they toured, wow. but not with Jim Morrison, yeah. obviously. Yeah. With uh, the singer, was it the guy from the Cult, or was that I don't even remember. Anyways, it was great. Oh yeah, Kite, of course. I've seen Kite like three times. I um, might say one of the best I ever saw was the original Village People. Really? Yeah, because I lived in Montreal, and uh, at the height of disco, I actually went and saw them, and 
my friend who is now a cop in Toronto. But not the cop from the village people. No, but he did dress up as the construction worker. Oh. And I do have pictures of it. And I've <laughs> always wanted to show some of his cop buddies. But nice. That was one. Of, yeah, that was that was pretty fun. I gotta That's say. That's cool. And and memorable. Yeah, and I've I don't know I've been to a lot of like big shows which have have been really spectacular like yeah. Lady Gaga yeah. and Madonna and stuff because the amount of production is just so over the top. Yeah. But then there's also just that vibe of when you go to a smaller show. Well, speaking of Lady Gaga, I saw her at Richards on Richards here when she was opening up for the Backstreet Boys where she did the after show thing where she did the show and ran right to Richards on Richards. So just as she was breaking, it was to maybe 200 people. And that was pretty spectacular because it was her whole show, but in a tiny club coming straight from Rogers Arena. Yeah. And those shows are always so special too. Like I remember a friend that was working on the show for The Faint and they were like no one. Yeah. And they were playing at the Starfish Room. There was like maybe 20 people there. And it was just like, this is a really cool band. Thanks for bringing me out to this. And then they just exploded after that. Yeah. That's always fun when you get to see someone when they're on the cusp. Yeah. So picking one, I know that was a, that was a trick question. That's why I made you answer it instead of me. <laughs> Backfired on me. Yep. Um, if you could have one magical power, what would it be? Uh, to fly. Oh, that's a good answer. Yeah. Then you wouldn't have to spend so much time and money on airfare. Or worry about my brakes. No, <laughs> uh, no, I just always thought, uh, I don't know, when I get to fly in dreams, I really love it. And I've always sort of said, hey, if you could do that, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, for sure. I agree. I don't know how high I would go, but <laughs> I definitely would be able to. A low rider. A low flyer. <laughs> uh, top five most used emojis on your phone. Oh, lame <laughs> they're, ba- they're bad oh i thought you meant the question no the question <laughs> I, I'm just, your questions are lame no there's a lot of uh, cakes um thumbs hearts snowflakes <laughs> and uh dogs i guess it's all about the context yeah i tend to whenever people have birthdays i always do a lot of emojis but otherwise yeah Hearts, hearts and Because I'm like snowflakes. Is that like name calling? <laughs> no, they just look good. <laughs> or you're like, it's snowing. It's snowing. I like I like the snow. Oh, I think I mixed up my questions. Oh, well, it's okay. Uh, do you ever get recognized when you are oot in a boot? Uh, not really. That's I've, I've always tried to keep low key. But I will sometimes from like actual fans that know my work as opposed to me being a public figure which is kind of nice when someone does come up and it's talking to me about my work i really appreciate that and i enjoy it as opposed to like hey i saw you on tv that type of thing (laughs) i'm so i get i get from true fans i'll get noticed and that's that's fine because it's generally they're 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 fans of my work not of the persona right so that's cool yeah and i've always wanted it like i've worked with so many people and watch what they go through being recognized and it's hell like yeah. the paparazzi that go after the big stars. I've had, to, I've had to do a lot of blocking for people where I've had to go deal, run through paparazzi and try and, you know. Distract them? Distract them. And I always got a kick out of it, but they're just horrible, some really horrible people. So, yeah. And do they, you have a really bad story you can share? Um, I'm just curious, morbidly curious. Not really beyond just having to physically get in, you know, trying to get out of a hotel and having to go lead and just run through packs and try and distract them and make space and then uh, you know whoever i'm with go go out a different door right but yeah. so you're like i'm gonna go streak in the hallway oh <laughs> any, 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 anything to distract them but <laughs> and i have no problem with playing the fool i'm very good at it so cool if you ever need distractions for paparazzi people give me a call and oh, I'm, I'm, I'm there definitely yeah. not that famous you know, hey it's coming trust <laughs> me i don't think so yeah, do. um top three celebrity crushes uh britney spears really oh she's awesome i've always had a thing a thing not you're like hit me baby one more time <laughs> <laughs> you got it <laughs> uh definitely britney um I played earlier Vanessa Paradis. I always had a thing for her. Okay. I always had something special for her. And uh, let's see. I don't even want, I don't know, for number three. That's okay. Two is good. Two is good. I definitely would not have thought Britney, though. 
No, when See, she we're first, learning on this when channel. she first came out, I just found her really like everything that she was doing was super well put together, and her songs were in her look, and I was like, wow, this she's 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 got it, <laughs> and she's, she's still entertaining. It. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram, but she has this thing with her midriff, oh. and she shoots these videos all from this one angle, and just I don't know what her infatuation with it is, but it's pretty pretty crazy. So if you haven't seen it, I would highly recommend it. All right. Well, I think I follow her on Twitter because, you know, I'm I'm part of that Save Britney yeah. <laughs> gang. No, her Instagram account's quite interesting. Cool. Um, if you had to wear one shirt for the rest of your life, what shirt would it be? Uh, one shirt for the rest of my life. It might be a Neu- Neubotten shirt. The oh. old Neubot Neister Zendi Neubot logo, I always had a thing for that. And I did have one for a long period. And I saw a picture. I'm like, fuck, where did that go? <laughs> I could, yeah, I could probably sport that for the rest of my life. That's awesome. Yeah. I wonder about a lot of my clothes, too. I'm like, where did that go? It's yeah. probably buried in my closet somewhere. Well, I found a bag in my storage of some amazing T-shirts that I thought were long gone that I should do something with. I should do some raffle and just give them away, but all sorts of really cool 80s industrial shirts. Ooh, that, that would be a popular raffle, yeah, I think. Yeah, no, they're, they're, I, I was shocked they still exist, and they're all in good shape, so. Cool. That could be coming. All right. We're going to play some more tunes. Did you want to introduce uh, this one? This was, well, speaking of Neubotten, we segue into it. They were in Vancouver for Expo 86, and our friend was, uh, uh, Myra Davies was, the promoter for all the shows that were going on and she was bringing in really cool bands. She brought in Neubotten and she brought in a band called Test Department and then she approached me and said, we're having these guys in for the week. Is there any chance of you going in the studio with them just to give them something to do so they're not getting bored? And I was like, absolutely. So I went into the Mushroom Studios with these guys for three or four days, intimidated the hell out of me. I was in over my head. They're hardcore German guys that, and they're speaking to each other just scared me because I always thought they were talking about me and just the way they talked. Um, and we recorded this song, a cover song called Morning Dew um, that I thought was just never going to be heard. But they went back to Germany and their producer loved it so much that it, I think it was the second or third song on the album. So this was recorded in Vancouver uh, when I was still quite green, but I was super happy it came out. And to this day, it was very privileged to get to do this. These are so many cool stories. Vancouver history right here. Okay, so I just want to check to see if you want to retract your favorite t-shirt statement. Um, Why? Because we have something very special for you. I'm very excited to find out. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna know that's gonna fit perfect. I know what I'm wearing tomorrow. <laughs> Pajamas. <laughs> it can uh, you can add it to your black t-shirt collection. I don't have any black t-shirts. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I was just making an assumption. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Thank you very much, Evelyn. That's you're welcome. Beautiful. New favorite shirt. Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna do a few more questions. Uh, let's do these ones from the chat first. <laughs> I like TV Vich's question. What question should we ask you? Um, I don't know. What question should we ask you? Um, Is there a question you'd like to be asked? What question should we ask them? Oh, what question should we ask the chat? <laughs> let's see what the chat asks. What's your favorite Skinny Puppy album? I like that one. Uh, okay, so question for you. Yes. Uh, do you like to visit nice cemeteries or other spooky places? This is a question from Hayshaker. Absolutely. That was one of the nice things living in New Orleans was the cemeteries there are quite spectacular. Well, they're, everything's above ground, so it's all mausoleums and it's all very ornate. And it's very peaceful, if you ask me. Um, and in, you know, on Skinny Puppy Tours, we constantly were trying to find places, cemeteries, weird places to visit. And one of the strangest ones is we were told outside of Lawrence, Kansas, we were playing there is a town called Stull. There's actually an Urge Overkill album or EP called Stull. And apparently it's one of the gateways to hell. Really? So I had no idea. We, we had the promoter said, let's, we want to go to Stull. And he's like, okay, let's go out there. 
So we drove out, and it was apparent, it, it, it's a, just a remnants of a church and a little cemetery. And we were kind of, yeah, so what? But as we drove up, there was a little house next to it. Then we saw this strange looking woman. And as we drove by, all of a sudden she was on the other side of the house. And we're like, that's kind of weird. What's going on here? That was really fast. We went into the cemetery. First thing we saw was this big black snake went right in front of us. So I'm like, this isn't going well. And it was getting down, sunset was coming. So I'm like, I'm getting a little bit like, I don't want to be here when it gets dark. <laughs> so we walked up to the church and the church was a little bit of a letdown because all the kids partied there and there was all the spray paint of bands and broken bottles and that. But then our you know, tour guide said, no, this is not the bad spot. He said, the bad spot is an old cemetery in the back behind the church. So we went behind the church and in the grass, it, there was something that looked like a bear. Some huge thing had been sleeping there by the imprint on the grass and had just gotten up and left, but it was huge. And like, no cows, no nothing. And we are looking at the guy and like, what is this? And he's like, I have no idea. And I'm like, sun's going down. We got to get the <laughs> hell out of here. So that was my adventure into one of the gateways to hell. But I didn't get through, so I'm still here. But yeah, I definitely love going to uh, spooky places. That's cool. Oh, so much fun. So you probably hit up the Lafayette Cemetery in oh, New yeah. Orleans. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to the one where Mary... Marie Laveau. Laveau is... Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't get to go to that one. Yeah, no, it's... it's New Orleans is really cool for that stuff. And then um, we also visited Highgate Cemetery in London. Oh, uh, yeah. I Have you been, been to that yet. one? No. It's a good one. But the thing to know in advance is that if you get there early, you can pay to get a tour which gets you access to the other uh, side uh, so we didn't know that so we actually didn't get to see the other side which is apparently even more beautiful than yeah just the public access side wow. no people spend <laughs> a lot of money for death yeah it's pretty crazy and why not yeah i it's mean pretty, it went, people well, are gonna look at that for for decades and years if you go visit centuries. and you're paying homage to whoever is there what a great thing yeah cool and story i would hi yeah i would highly recommend if you'd ever Get a chance to go to New Orleans. It's pretty, it's pretty spectacular for, for just that reason. Thank you so much for the Raid 80s Dance Party. Welcome, Raiders. We are here doing a little interview with Dave Rave Ogilvie and listening to some of his favorite music picks. Uh, we have another question here from Dharma Pucks. Who did you most enjoy working with in the studio? Uh, you know, back to Trent Reznor, definitely up there. Rob Halford, I will say... He, I, I didn't know what I was getting into working with him, but man, uh, what an awesome person to hang out with, a person to, that I had no idea. I was quite intimidated, but he's the exact opposite. He's just like your awesome uncle or your... Your, <laughs> your leather English daddy. Your leather daddy. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's, he is a, a super fun guy, or not fun, just gentleman to work with. And it was funny because when I first met him in New Orleans again, uh, the next day, somehow, I was going out for crawfish with him and his partner. And I always was like, I can't eat crawfish. This is too weird. This is too weird. <laughs> and so the next thing I know, here's Rob Halford pa passing me a bowl full of crawfish. Like, you've got to try these. And I'm like, Hi, what can I do? I can't say no. So <laughs> I had to break from my traditions there and ate some crawfish. And I didn't die. So Well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and they actually were quite tasty, but... You. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if I were to summon you with a witchy spell, what items would I put in my pentagram to summon you? Oh, locks of hair. Absolutely. Whose hair? Yours? Mine? Um, Britney Spears? Britney Spears. <laughs> that would Britney Spears and mine. That I'll never be, be able cool. to summon, summon you then. Well, How am I ever going to get Britney's hair? We could check her out on Instagram and ask her. <laughs> what could she say? No. She I probably think, wouldn't even answer. I don't know answer. if it'd be too weird. We just want to lock your hair, hair for some summon spells. Immediate blockage. Yeah. <laughs> or we would get a lock of her hair. These days, you never know. What else? Uh, some guitar picks from some of my favorite guitar players. I think they, those would be good. Who are your favorite guitar players? Uh, Mick Ronson, Carlos Alomar. I think those guys would be, that, that would work. I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to summon Dave. Uh, can just keep on hoping. <laughs> but I did manage to get him here, so there's that. <laughs> it did work. Um, <laughs> what would you do if you won the lottery? 
what would I do if I won the lottery? I would probably have a really good celebration with all my close friends. That'd be my first thing. I'd like to share the wealth and do something that we would all remember for the rest of our lives. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, and I'd like to say, you know, I'd love, love to, well, I would love to build my own studio, not a commercial venture, but something personally, something really special. For sure, I but would like would, to do that too. Yeah, but do, but do something really, really cool. I always had this great idea that no one ever wants to take me up on, obviously, because it costs too much money, but where, say, four times a year, every three months, you redress your studio, so you have Hollywood set designers come in, and do the whole studio. So one for three months, it's like the alien landscape from, <laughs> from on the ship, from Nostradamus. And then the next one, it's the Texas Chainsaw Massacre feel. And then the next one, and you constantly, every three months, would have a new horror feel or sci-fi or cartoon feel. And it would just be this ever-changing, but it would be pretty expensive to get it done. But I'm talking doing it top-notch, so you'd walk in and you feel like you're there. Right, we got to hit Isaac up for some connections. Yeah, I think Isaac <laughs> would definitely help with that. <laughs> but I, I always thought that would be such a awesome thing to inspire people to, you know. And and in three months, if you did it, and a band takes three months, then it changes the next three months. And that would be really evolving. cool. I I mean, I would like to do that just so I could do photo shoots every oh, month. Oh, the the shots that would come out it would be fantastic. Right behind the scenes, are yeah. they recording this at Camp Crystal Lake? Yes. <laughs> and that, and so that, bizarre. And it would add to the you know the studio vibe that adds to the music. It would definitely, I think make a difference you you're right it. those screams are real people are getting murdered yeah <laughs> uh mullet or man bun oh mullet absolutely <laughs> <laughs> is it really a question no man, uh, man buns just piss me off <laughs> there's no doubt anytime i see one i get pissed off anytime i even hear the word i get pissed off so please don't <laughs> i just say pissed it off dave <laughs> don't say it again <laughs> and i only have one question left for you you may notice that this banner has toast and bread on it. Yep. So my question is, will you eat toast with me? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I love toast. Right? Oh. I get some of that good Cobb's bread. It's delicious. Oh, I love toast. All right. It's toast time. We're going to play some more tunes. Hey, kids, this one's uh, fresh and it's... Please? Uh, Jezebel, you're going to listen to me. Jezebel, go ahead, sister. Keep going. Jezebel abandoned you. She was intended by God to be a virtuous woman. Here it comes. I'm so thin. All I want is to breathe. I'm too thin. All I want you to breathe with me. Time and new space. So we. So we only have a few songs left with Dave. We have like maybe 15 more minutes in this stream, unless you guys want to stay up late. By the way, the toast was delicious. <laughs> it, yeah, it was. Yeah, you guys are missing been, out. It might have been the best toast I've ever had in my life. <laughs> and I've had a lot of toast. Thank you guys so much for being here. And thanks, Dave, for being here, I guess, thanks on our show. Thanks, everyone, for having me. This is awesome. Yes. This is my best Friday night ever. <laughs> it's uh, going to be hard to top this. Well, that's because there was toast. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say, but that definitely was in your favor. So, 
Um, but we're going to play a special song here for Dave because he hasn't heard this song before. We're going to play the This is a Trent Reznor song because he's worked with Trent. So this will be really funny to see his reaction when he hears this song because he's never heard it before. Very excited. What did you think? It's a Trent Reznor song. <laughs> Absolutely. It's awesome. <laughs> I know. It's so funny, right? Yeah, he's, he's nailing it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave you with the song Always for Orgasm because this song is coming out, I believe, in another week. Um, it's from Carbon Decay, Anthony H., Spank the Nun, and it may have guest vocals from yours truly on it. Oh. So you'll be able to get it online very, sh- very soon. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to raid another channel. And thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you guys. Yay. That was awesome. So much fun. 